Hello YouTube, this is the ninth video in our JavaScript and Canvas Minesweeper game development tutorial. Um, in this tutorial, we are going to be finishing up our um, surrounding bombs function. Uh, and the first thing that we're going to do is get rid of all our console logs um, that we've created in the past videos that we didn't delete. So go ahead and pause the video for a minute and get rid of any of those that are extra that we don't really need because um, it just kind of clutters up the code. Um, after you've done that, we're going to start by um, modifying our click pass function to um, have an X and Y parameter, um, and this will allow us to check any box we want, not just the box that was clicked, because previously it just assumed that the X and Y value that it was checking was the one that was clicked. But in this tutorial, we're going to need to be checking boxes other than the ones that were the ones that were clicked. So we're going to find the place that the function is called and add those parameters. Um, and it's going to be called on the x and y uh, value of the user's click. But we're going to be using other x and y values as well. So uh, in the last video, or I guess two videos ago, we left off uh, right here kind of writing this function. Um, but we didn't complete it, and what we need to do in this one, in this video, is to um, when a user clicks a square with zero bombs surrounding, to kind of do a chain reaction type um, thing where uh, it automatically, if there are zero bombs surrounding it, it automatically runs this function on all the squares around it. Um, so we get kind of a um, an effect like that and you'll see what I mean if you don't understand um, if you don't understand just go along with the code and it'll make sense later uh, okay so the first thing we're gonna do is check if there are zero bombs surrounding so we'll check if that equals zero and the second thing we're gonna do is run a for loop and what we're gonna be doing is just like up here we're going to loop through boxes to check I believe that's the variable name. And then we're going to be, um, well, first thing, we're going to check that the box that it's being checked is inside the boundaries of the um, the the grid, I guess. And then we're going to be getting an X and Y value, see if it's already been um, added to our clicked BS function, and then and if it hasn't, we're going to be adding it to that and um, setting that variable there within the array to zero. Um, so if that didn't make sense, just follow along and it, hopefully you'll figure it out. Um, okay, so replace, first thing we want to do is replace all the X and Y, these clicked X and Y's here to X and Y. Just get rid of the clicked and make it lowercase. Okay, so that's good. Um, now our function will be using these variables rather than the clicked box location. Okay, so for each of these surrounding squares, we want to make sure that the square is within the grid. So we're going to make sure that x plus um, boxes to check i and then one of the values is equal to, or is greater than zero. So the, we'll be checking the x value, which is zero. And then the y value is one corresponds to the y value here, as you can see. Uh, just a little refresher. We have like this could, i would be zero here, i would be one here, i would be two here. And then i zero would be negative one, which would be the x value. and I um, one would be the y value. So as long as that's greater than zero and this is less than nine, which is the outer limit, um, and the y whoa, and the y value.
is um, greater than zero, and it's also less than nine. Okay. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna be um, making new variables. Y, X1 is going to be X plus boxes to check I0. Um, and this is basically gonna be a variable that will store the um, X value that we're checking for as X is the click location and the bot and this is the direction that we're checking in and then we're going to do the same thing for y here okay um, and then we're going to also make a uh, variable that will allow us to um, make sure that we're not testing the same box over and over again if it's already been tested um, so we so that we don't have an infinite loop going. Um, so we're gonna make this variable already clicked, which is gonna be false. And basically we're gonna loop through our clicked bonds array and make sure that the um, bomb isn't in that array already, or that square that isn't in that already. Um, so I guess that's clicked boxes, sorry. Um, and if it is, then we're going to set already click to true. And then after that for loop is run, we're going to check if it's false still. And if it's false, then we're going to run the function on that on that X and Y value we're testing. Um, so that was probably confusing, but we'll just go ahead anyway. Um, so we're going to use N as our variable in clicked boxes. And we're going to say if clicked boxes and zero which is going to be the x value of the clicked box is equal to x1 and clicked boxes and one is equal to y1 then we're going to know that already that it's already been clicked that that box has already been clicked um, so we're going to say true and then we're going to check if that variable is true or if it's false still and if it's still false if that box hasn't been clicked then we want to call the function again on the um, box that's being tested so here we go I find a zero here. That's weird. Um, okay. Um, I pause the video and look through the code, and one of the problems is that I didn't do greater than or equal to on all these, um, which that might fix it. We'll see here. If it doesn't, I'll pause the video again. Okay, and I think we have found our solution. This has got to be one. Okay, deadly mistake here, boys and girls. All right, voila. Um, so that should do the trick. Sorry, that figure took took me like two months to figure out how to fix that, um, to get that functioning. Um, so sorry, it's been so long. I've I've been really busy, but um, yeah, that's it for this video. In the next one, we're going to be um, adding a timer and new um, new game button. And that should be about it. We also have to um, allow users to right-click, um, which will probably, actually, yeah, that'll probably come after the, um, the timer and new button video. Um, yeah. Okay. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.